Hey everyone, and thanks for joining us on another episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. In today's episode, we're going to be doing a little bit of VOR tracking with the G1000 NXI. So, if you want to know more about the G1000 NXI and how to do a little bit of VOR tracking, then stay tuned! Right here on 2020 Flight Simmers! Alright everyone, welcome to the cockpit of the beautiful Cessna 172. So today's episode, we're going to be doing a little bit of VOR tracking, but before we can even get off the ground today, we have to look at our VFR chart. So today we are going to be departing Arcadia Municipal. We're going to be tracking the LaBelle VOR inbound to Airglades Airport. So if we look on our chart right here, our radial that we're going to be tracking inbound to the VOR is 312. The actual course heading that we're going to be on is 139. So I'll show you how we're going to enter that in the G1000 GPS. The outbound radial to our airport here is going to be 106. We're going to be coming inbound to runway 13, so hopefully we'll make it without any problems. So now that we have taken a look at the path that we want to take today, there is one other thing that we need to get off this VFR chart, and that is the LaBelle VOR frequency. We can see right here it's 110.4, so we will go ahead and enter 110.4 in our nav radio. Now to enter this frequency in our nav radio, all we have to do is come down here to the MFD screen, and we can turn on the nav dial right at the top here. So the outer knob is going to adjust our bigger numbers, so we can set that for 110. The inner knob is going to adjust our small numbers. We can send that for dot four. Now to transfer that, all we got to do is smash on the transfer button. And you can see now our active frequency is right here. And it has picked that up as LBV, which is the LaBelle VOR. So that is going to be our heading 139. Now how you get that is if you were to draw this line all the way through this VOR, compass rows here it would come out right on the other side right at 139 so that is the course we're going to enter down here for our vo1 or obs1 dial here now the outbound course is going to be a radial of 106 so because we are going outbound from the vor we're actually going to be tracking the exact radial here which is going to be 106 inbound to our destination airport. So now that we got those figures, we can come down here and input that into our course knob. So we're just gonna make this say 139. And there we go. Now there's a couple other bits of information on here that we need to also keep in mind. We really wanna know the distance outbound of that VOR to our destination airport because that is going to let us know how close we're getting to that airport. You can see here on the VFR map, this is 19 miles away from the VOR. So as we're monitoring our DME information as we're traveling away from the VOR, that will give us a better understanding of how close we are because we know it's only 19 miles away. All right, so now we got all that information. Let's get this baby up in the air and let's stop jibber-jabbering. All right, so there's one more thing I forgot to do to the GPS here, and that is to turn on our DME information for NAV1. So all we got to do is hit that, and it will bring up our DME information for NAV1, and that is 110.4. And if we look over here, 110.4, everything is good to go. Everything is jiving correctly. Make sure you've got your all of your options set before we go, and let's get this thing off the ground. Hit some taxi lights. Tell everybody, get out of the way. We're coming through. Now, by the way, if anybody has any questions while we're going through any of these tutorials today, please leave a comment down below in the comments section. I'd love to answer your questions for you. And by the way, if this video does help you out in any way, smash on that thumbs up button. While you're down there, don't forget to hit that subscribe and tick that little bell for more videos just like this one. Again, I want to thank everybody for joining us here on today's flight. Should be exciting, and it won't be too long. 
The only other thing that I'm going to do, because as you can see down here on our needle here for VOR1, it is not actually picked up that VOR station, and that's because we're too close to the ground right now. To make sure that we stay on course is to go ahead and set the heading bug to 139, which is our course inbound to the VOR. We're just going to maintain this runway heading now until we get past the end of the runway and then we will start our turn. All right, there we go. And you can hear the Morse code coming through now. All right, so let's bring up some flaps and let's talk about the Morse code that you're hearing right now. So to get that Morse code to come through the radios, all you have to do is come right down here in the center and tap on the nav one button because that is the frequency that we have right here in our nav. So if we were using a nav two frequency, we would then hit on the nav two button. Because we're using nav one, you're gonna go ahead and hit the nav one button. Now when you do that, you're going to hear the Morse code coming through for this VOR station that we have programmed in here into NAV1. Now there's a reason why you want to listen to the Morse code, and one of those big reasons is to make sure that you have the correct frequency entered in the radio. So now if you look down here, you can see the DME information. We're approximately 31 miles away. And also, if you look up here to where we have the NAV1 frequency input, it shows LBV. That gives us one layer of protection here to let us know that, hey, we've got the right VOR frequency put in the GPS here. That second layer of redundancy is the Morse code, and that never fails. So here is how we read it. If you come over here to the VFR chart, right here is your Morse code identifier. So what we're going to do is wait for the Morse code to stop, and then we are going to start listening to this and make sure that it corresponds with this. Here we go. And there you go, folks. So as you can see, that is the correct Morse code identifier for the LaBelle VOR. And now that we know that, we can go ahead and shut that thing up. So we just hit on the Nav1 button again, and it will take that right away. Now, if everybody can notice down here on the MFD, you're not seeing any GPS coordinates input. That's because if we hit the flight plan, there is no flight plan in here. So we are going strictly off of VORs and courses today. So it looks like we have come up to altitude right around 2,000 feet and we are now turning to intercept our VOR course that we have input here at 139. Now keep in mind everybody, your course and your heading are completely different. So basically what that means is, for the GPS to keep us on a course of 139 here, because we have wind coming from the side at five knots here, the plane is actually turning to a heading of 147. So we're kind of crabbing a little bit, and we have to do that to maintain this proper course. I hope that explains a little bit of course and heading for you. And again, if you have any questions on that, just go ahead and post those down below in the comments, and I will answer those for you as soon as possible. Alrighty, everyone, so now that we're on course and we're at proper altitude, there's not much more here that we have to go over until we get inbound to that VOR. So, I think I'll meet you there. Alright, everyone.
I'll see you when we get a little bit closer to that VOR station. Okay, everyone, so we're getting pretty close now to the VOR, as you can see down here. We are about six miles away. Now, there's a couple things that we need to go over first before we come inbound to land. So the first thing that we need to look at is the actual elevation for the runway, and that is 20 feet. So that means that our pattern altitude for this airport is going to be 1,020 feet. Oh, and by the way, if you would like to have a more in-depth tutorial about VFR flying, I will post a link down below for our VFR course. I highly recommend, if you're new to this, to go down there and check those out. There is a lot of information in that three-episode course so far. Now, if we take a look down here at our GPS, uh, we can see that we're about 2.3 miles out. Now there's a couple things that we're going to need to do now before we hit that VOR. One of those things is we want to turn before we get to that VOR station so this way we don't overshoot that VOR. Now to do that, all we need to do is turn our heading bug to the outbound course, which is going to be 106. Perfect. So now that we have that set, what we're going to do is hit our heading hold and this way the GPS is going to turn to our heading. In that meantime, while we're in heading hold, we can then come down here and adjust our course to our new course. Now that we're about a half a mile out from the turn, what I want to do right now is go ahead and hit our heading hold. As you see, the plane is going to start turning for that course of 106, and while that is happening, I'm going to come right down here to the course knob and turn that to our course of 106. This way it gives us time to input this information, and it also doesn't allow us to overshoot that VOR. Now that we have done that, we can go ahead and re-enter nav mode and it will put us back on our VOR course. Now, one thing that we're gonna take note of now is that our DME information is now going to start increasing, as well as you can see the needle had flipped here, so the little arrow is now pointing behind us. Now that tells us that the VOR is behind us at this point. That is very good information to know, and again, we go over a lot of that and more in our VFR tutorial series. So now that we're traveling away from this VOR now, and we're maintaining this 106 course, the one thing that we have to keep in mind is that the airport is only 19 miles away, and we are at 2,000 feet, which we need to be at 1,020 feet for our approach and for the pattern altitude. So most likely what I'm going to do around 10 miles out is I'm going to start the descent down to 1,000 feet. So this way we get a little bit closer and we should be able to get down to 1,000 feet then by that 10 mile marker. I hope everybody is enjoying themselves so far during this tutorial. If you are a sub to the channel, would be fantastic. All right, so let's take a look here at the PFD screen, and we can see in our DME information that we are now 10 miles away from that VOR. So we only have nine more miles to go until we hit the airport. So let's go ahead and lower the altitude down to 1,000 feet, and we can also set a vertical speed Eh, we'll do a modest minus 600 feet per minute. And always remember to pull back on the throttle so you don't overspeed that engine. Now the other thing that we need to do is kind of monitor our speed because once we get towards that airport, we want to have us down to near around 100 knots. This way we'll be able to control the plane when we need to come in for our descent, and we'll be able to lower the flaps. 
By the way, if you didn't know this, if you take a look down here on the flap handle, it actually tells you your airspeed. So for our first stage of flaps, 110 knots, full flaps at 85 knots. Pretty cool information if you didn't know that. All right, so it looks like we are approaching our 1,000 foot mark. So I'm just going to get back on the throttle just a bit, just to maintain that 110 knots or so. Looks like the airport that we're heading to is right in front of us today. Now keep in mind that we want to come in on runway 13. So all of your runway headings also correspond with a true heading. So for runway 13, we're going to turn our heading bug to 130. Now that it looks like we're only about four miles out from the airport, I'm going to go ahead and turn off that autopilot right now and make a little left-hand turn here so that I can come in on runway 13. So we're not going to use any autopilot anymore, but we are now going to come in for a landing. We're going to drop one notch of flaps right now and hit those landing lights. Mind the trim. Oh, and by the way, if you see these four little lights down here, that is your Pappy lights. We're going to go over those in a future episode in quite a different plane. I think you will enjoy that one. Stay tuned. According to the Pappy lights, it looks like we are still a little bit high, which is okay. So we're going to just try to descend a little bit. Now keep in mind that we cannot add our last stage of flaps until we are down to about 85 knots. I have now pulled out all the throttle pretty much. Nope all the throttle and we are now coasting in to Airglades Airport and once we're just about on the runway I'm going to throw us down in full flaps and coast right in That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do it. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. I hope everybody got some great information out of the video. If you did, go down below and hit that thumbs up button. Show us some love. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and tick that little bell. And if you have any comments, please go ahead and put those down in the comments section. It has been a pleasure serving you today, and to all my flight simmers out there, Keep the blue side up. We will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone.